and for today's Kaplan Club, I will be discussing about intellectual disability. So for intellectual disability, it is described by the American Association on Intellectual and Disability as disability characterized by significant in both intellectual functioning and adaptive behavior before intellectual functioning is limitations in reasoning behavior limitations in conceptual SM only make a diagnosis of intellectual disability if there is a deficit in intellectual and adaptive functioning. To determine the level of intellectual disability, we should assess social adaptation and the intelligence quotient. For the IQ test, it is less valid in the lower portions of the range However, this is still the measurement for intellectual disability by ICD. Uh, specific scales such as the WISC, Stanford Binet, Kaufman, and Ravens are types of IQ tests. Significantly sub-average IQ test means an IQ of 70 or below or two standard deviations below the mean. Mild intellectual disability is an IQ score of 50 to 70, moderate is 35 to 50, severe is 20, and profound is less than 20. According to the DSM, to determine the levels of severity of intellectual disability, we should me measure adaptive function. It measures a conceptual domain, social domain, and practical domain. It also determines the level of support needed of the patient. Social functioning, social norms, and performance of everyday tasks are the Vineland Adaptive Behavior Scale, which measures communications, daily living skills, socialization, and motor skills. However, in the ICD code and in the ICD 11, they already included adaptive functioning to determine uh, the level of intellectual disability. Also, according to the American Association of Intellectual and Developmental Disability, they promote a conceptual uh, view of intellectual disability as a functional interaction between individual and environment rather than a designation of a person's limitations. So, uh, they will determine if the environmental support needed of the patient is intermittent, limited, extensive, or pervasive. And the adaptive function domains are as follows. So in this table, this is the comparison between the DSM-5 and ICD criteria for intellectual dis disability. Uh, in the ICD-11, is already called intellectual disability. So for the degrees of severity of mild intellectual disability with an IQ, IQ level of 50 to 70, usually it's not identified until grades 1 and 2 when academic demands increase. Causes for a mild intellectual disability are not identified this groomy of the disability can live independently with appropriate support and raise their own families of people with intellectual disabilities they can acquire language and can communicate adequately during early childhood however they are challenged academically and are not able to achieve above a second to third grade level. During adolescence, socialization difficulties often set these persons apart and a great deal of social and vocational support is beneficial. For adults, uh, semi-skilled work under appropriate supervision may be able to be done. For severe intellectual disability, uh, with an IQ score of 20 to 35, around 4% of individuals suffer 
uh, ah, this is rep this represents 4% of individuals with intellectual disabilities. They may be able to develop communication skills in childhood, can learn to count, as well as recognize words that are critical to functioning. In this group, the cause for the intellectual disability is more likely to be identified than in the milder forms. Uh, persons with severe intellectual disability may adapt well to being supervised in living situations such as group homes and they can perform work-related tasks under supervision. So for profound intellectual disability, it constitutes approximately 1-2% to of individuals with intellectual disabilities. Uh, they have identifiable causes for their condition. Uh, children with profound intellectual disabilities may be taught self-care skills and they can learn to communicate their needs. However, they need constant supervision. So as said, the diagnosis for intellectual disability needs standardized intellectual assessment and standardized adaptive function assessment. For the history, it is important to take the mother's history of the mother's pregnancy, labor and delivery. For the uh, family history of intellectual disability, the consanguinity of parents, and known family hereditary disorders. For the laboratory examination, uh, chromosomal analysis, urine and blood testing for metabolic disorders, and neuroimaging is also important. Chromosomal abnormalities are the most common cause of intellectual disability. For chromosome studies, there are specific fluorescent in situ hybridization markers that can detect microscopic deletions in up to 7% of people with moderate to severe disability. Amniocentesis, a small amount of amniotic fluid taken in the amniotic cavity transabdominally at 15 weeks is useful for diagnosing prenatal chromosomal abnormalities. Chorionic villi sampling taken at 8 to 10 weeks and the result is also available in a short time, can also detect fetal chromosomal abnormalities. Urine and blood analysis, this is indicated because Lesch-Nyhan syndrome, galactosemia, phenylketonuria, Hurler syndrome, and Hunter syndrome can be detected through urine and blood analysis. Electroencephalography, should be requested when considering for a seizure disorder. Usually, the result would be non-specific EEG changes with slow frequencies with bursts of spikes and sharp or blunt wave complexes are found in higher frequency among populations with intellectual disability. Neuroimaging such as CT scan and MRI have found high rates of abnormalities in patients with microcephaly, significant delay, cer cerebral palsy, and profound disability. Among patients with intellectual disability, seizures, microcephaly or macrocephaly, loss of previously acquired skills, or neurologic signs such as dystonia, spasticity, or altered reflexes are all indications for imaging. Hearing and speech evaluations, speech development is the most re reliable criterion in investigating intellectual disability. Hearing impairments often occur in persons who are intellectually disabled, but in some instances, hearing in impairments can also simulate intellectual disability. For the differential diagnosis, severe child maternity maltreatment, abuse, or neglect can contribute to delays in development, but this is partially rever reversible if the child grows up in a corrective, enriched, and stimulating environment. Sensory disabilities such as deafness and blindness would contribute to a lack of awareness of the sensory deficit would lead to inappropriate testing. Expressive and receptive speech disorders may also give the impression of an intellectual disability in a child of average intelligence. Cerebral palsy can be mistaken for intellectual disability. Chronic debilitating medical diseases 
may depress and delay a child's functioning. Seizure disorders, especially when uncontrolled, can contribute to a persisting intellectual disability. Specific syndromes such as alexia, which is failure to read, agraphia, failure to write, and aphasia, failure to communicate, may occur in a child of average and superior intelligence. Learning disorders can also coexist with intellectual disabilities. Intellectual disabilities and autism spectrum disorder can also often coexist. For comorbidities, ADHD and ADHD-like symptoms are common among children with sub-average intelligence, genetic disorders, and developmental delay. Neurologic disorders such as seizure disorders occur more frequently in individuals with intellectual disabilities. For the course and prognosis, intellectual impairment does not improve but the level of adaptation increases with age. Comorbid psychiatric disorders can also negatively impact prognosis. For the treatment, Interventions for children and adolescents with intellectual disabilities should incorporate an assessment of social, educational, psychiatric, and environmental needs. For pre prevention, primary prevention uh, comprises of actions taken to eliminate or reduce the conditions that lead to the development of intellectual disability as well as associated disorders. So screening babies for phenylketonuria, education of the general public about strategies to prevent intellectual disabilities such as prevention of taking alcohol in pregnancy and optimal maternal and child care, as well as family and genetic counseling to help reduce the incidence of intellectual disability in a family with, with a history of genetic disorder. Secondary and tertiary prevention is prompt attention to medical and psychiatric complications of intellectual disability can diminish their course and minimize the sequelae and consequent disabilities. Phenylketonuria and hypothyroidism can also be treated effectively in an early stage by dietary control and hormone re replacement therapy. For psychosocial interventions, Educational intervention such as a comprehensive program that addresses academics and training in adaptive skills, social skills, and vocational skills. Particular attention should focus on communication and efforts to improve the quality of life. Behavioral, behavioral and cognitive behavioral interventions uh, to shape and enhance the social behaviors of patients and also control aggressive and destructive behaviors. Positive reinforcement for desired behaviors and benign punishment for objectionable behaviors has been helpful. Cognitive therapy such as dispelling false beliefs and relaxation exercises with self-instruction has also been recommended for intellectually disabled persons who can follow instructions. Psychodynamic therapy will decrease conflicts about expectations that result in persistent anxiety, rage, and depression. Family, in family education, ways to enhance competence and self-esteem while maintaining realistic expectations for an intellectually disabled patient is important. The family often finds it challenging to balance fostering independence as well as providing a nurturing and supportive environment. The parents may benefit from continuous counseling or family therapy. Social interventions such as the Special Olympics International can give a sense of uh, uh, can develop physical fitness as well as enhance social interactions and friendships and also general self-esteem. For psychopharmacologic intervention, it should be done on an evidence-based literature. However, given the paucity of randomized trials in childhood intellectual disability population, an empirical approach must also be taken. For aggression, 
irritability and self-injurious behavior, antipsychotic medication such as aripiprazole and risperidone had reasonable effect sizes in multiple studies. Antipsychotics are also helpful in short-term management of aggression. However, there is little evidence for long-term use of these medications. For ADHD disorder, methylphenidate can be given as well as clonidine and atomoxetine. Intellectual disability with depression or depressive disorders, careful evaluation should be done because it is easy to miss when behavioral problems are prominent. Uh, however, there have been anecdotal reports of disinhibition in response to SSRIs. Given the relatively safe uh, indications for SSRI antidepressants, it is reasonable to try them when a child with intellectual disability is depressed. For stereotypical motor movements, antipsychotic may be given if the behavior is harmful. For OCD, SSRI can also be given. And for explosive rage behavior, antipsychotic medications, particularly risperidone, are typically used for the treatment of explosive rage. Propanolol has also been anecdotally reported to result in fewer explosive rages. For the epi epidemiology, Intellectual disability occurs in 10 to 15 per 1,000 children in developing countries, 1 to 3% of the population in Western societies. School-aged children have the highest incidence of intellectual disability reported, with peak age occurring at 10 to 14 years old. It is also 1.5 times more common among males. So mild intellectual disability comprises... Uh, most of the population of intellectually disabled uh, patients, approximately 85%, moderate at 10%, severe at 4%, and profound at 2%. Two-thirds of children with intellectual disability also have a comorbid psychiatric disorder. 40.7% of intellectually disabled children between 4 to 18 years old also met the criteria for at least one additional psychiatric disorder. Mild intellectual disability has been linked to disruptive and conduct disorder behaviors. Severe intellectual disability has been linked to autism. And profound intellectual disability uh, was found to have less likely, is less likely to exhibit comorbid psychiatric disorders. 2-3% to of those with intellectual disability meet the diagnostic criteria for schizophrenia. And 50% of children and adults meet the criteria for a mood disorder. So these, are as, these uh, signs are as follows. The psychiatric symptoms outside of a full psychiatric disorder uh, that present commonly in intellectually uh, disabled people. For the etiology, chromosomal and inherited conditions uh, has been found to be a genetic factor. Developmental and environmental factors that can lead to intellectual disability would be prenatal exposure to infections and toxins. Environmental and acquired factors are prenatal trauma and prematurity. Sociocultural factors can also contribute. And the severity may, be, may relate to the timing and duration of a given trauma and degree of exposure to the central nervous system. Three-fourths of those diagnosed with severe intellectual disability is, an is with an identifiable cause but only half for those with mild intellectual disability. Down syndrome and fragile X syndrome are the most common disorders that produce at least moderate intellectual disorder, uh, disability. Deprivation of nutrition, nurturance, and social stimulation can also uh, cause mild intellectual disability. Metabolic disorders associated with intellectual disability, as mentioned earlier, is phenylcatenuria. So for the genetic causes, single gene causes such as for the 
Fragile X syndrome, the mutation of your FMR1 gene mutation, is the most common first X-linked gene to be identified as a direct cause of intellectual disability. Abnormalities in autosomal chromosomes are more frequently associated with intellectual disability in contrast to sex chromosomes. Visible and submicroscopic chromosomal causes of intellectual disability, an example of that would be trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Deletions, translocations, supernumerary marker chromosomes are also chromosomal abnormalities associated with intellectual disability. So, genetic intellectual disability and behavioral phenotypes. So, for Down syndrome, the phenotype, uh, they are usually with slanted eyes, with epicantal folds, and a flat nose. There are three types of chromosomal aberrations in Down syndrome. Patients with trisomy 21, there are three chromosomes, three chromosome 21 instead of the usual two, leading into 47 chromosomes with an extra chromosome 21. So the non-disjunction occurring after fertilization in any cell division results in the mosaicism, a condition in which there are both normal and trisomic cells in various tissues. In translocation, a fusion occurs of two chromosomes, usually 21 and 15, resulting in, resulting in a total of 46 chromosomes despite the presence of an extra chromosome 21. They are mildly to moderately intellectual disabled with a minority having an IQ above 50. Cognitive development appears to progress normally from birth to 6 months of age. IQ scores gradually decrease from near normal at 1 year of age to about 30 to 50 as development proceeds. The decline in intellectual function may not be readily apparent. They are usually found to be placid, cheerful, and cooperative and can adapt quickly. But during adolescence, there can be emotional difficulties and behavior disorders. Language dysfunction is also a relative weakness. Sociability, they are sociable and with social skills, with interpersonal cooperation and conformity with social conventions are their strengths. Their hands are broad and thick with a single palmar transversal crease and fingers that are short, short and curved inward. The moral reflex is also weak and absent. For Fragile X Syndrome, it is the second most common single cause of intellectual disability. Mutation on the X chromosome at what is known as the fragile site, the XQ27.3. The typical appearance includes large long head and ears, short stature, hyperextensible joints, and postpubertal macroorchidism. Intellectual disability range from mild to severe. Severe. There is also higher rate of ADHD, learning disorders, and autism. Deficits in language function include rapid perseverative speech with abnormalities in combining words into phrases and sentences. They are relatively strong in communication and socialization, and intellectual function seem to decline in the pubertal period. Uh, female carriers are less impaired than males. For the prader willi syndrome, it is caused by a small deletion involving chromosome 15 occurring sporadically. The prevalence is less than 1 in 10,000. The phenotype is a compulsive eating behavior, obesity, intellectual disability, hypogonadism, small stature, hypotonia, and small hands and feet. Credo-Chat syndrome, or cat's cry, is a deletion in chromosome 5. They have severely intellectually disabled and show many in signs often associated with chromosomal aberrations such as microcephaly, low-set ears, oblique palpebral fissures, hypertellurism, and micrognathia. The characteristic cat-like cry is caused by the laryngeal abnormalities that gradually change and disappear with increasing age. Phenylketonuria is an underlying metabolic defect because of the inability to convert phenylalanine to parathyroxine because of the absence of the 
enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. PKU is preventable since there is a screening for it. Treatment is also a low phenylalanine diet. Uh, patients with PKU are severely intellectually disabled, but some have borderline or average intelligence. Other symptoms are eczema, vomiting, and convulsions. They are hyperactive and irritable, frequently exhibit temper tantrums, display bizarre movements of their bodies and upper extremities, including twisting hand mannerisms. Verbal and nonverbal communication is commonly severely impaired or non-existent. There is also reduced coordination and they have many perceptual difficulties. Uh, for best results, early diagnosis and a start of phenyl, uh, of uh, start of dietary treatment before the child is six months of age. For Rett syndrome, it is a form of autism spectrum disorder caused by a dominant X-linked gene. It is degenerative and affects only females. There is deterioration in communication skills, motor behavior, and social functioning starting at about one year of age. Symptoms are ataxia, facial grimacing, teeth grinding, and loss of speech. Progressive great disturbance, scoliosis, and seizures also occur. So EEG findings uh, are epileptiform discharges, even in the absence of clinical seizures. Uh, after 10 years, many patients are wheelchair-bound with muscle wasting, rigidity, and virtually no language ability. Long-term receptive and expressive communication and socialization abilities remain at developmental level of less than one year. Neurofibromatosis, so it's also known as von Recklinghausen's disease. It is the most common of the neurocutaneous syndromes. It is caused by a single dominant gene which may be inherited or occur as a new, muta new mutation. It occurs in about 1 of 5,000 births, characterized by cafe au lait spots on the skin and neurofibromas. There is mild intellectual disability in about one-third with those diseases. Next is tuberous sclerosis. It is the second most common neurocutaneous syndrome. Seizures are present in those with intellectual disability. Childhood disintegrative disorder is now included in the autism spectrum disorder. So this is characterized as marked regression in several areas of functioning after two years of normal development. After the deterioration, the children closely resemble children with autistic disorder. Lesch-Nyhan syndrome is a rare disorder caused by a deficiency of an enzyme involved in purine metabolism. Patients have intellectual disability, microcephaly, seizures, chorioathetosis, and spasticity. There is also severe compulsive self-mutilation by biting the mouth and fingers. Adrenoleucodystrophy is the most common of several disorders of pseudonophilic cerebral sclerosis. Uh, there is adrenocortical insufficiency that accompanies the cerebral degeneration. The onset is between 5 to 8 years old with seizures, gait disturbance, and mild intellectual impairment. It is rapidly progressive, but some patients may have a relapsing remitting course. Maple syrup disease uh, usually appears during the first week of life, and the infant deteriorates rapidly with the cerebrate rigidity, seizures, respiratory irregularity, and hypoglycemia. If untreated, it is fatal. Treatment uh, should be a diet deficient in the three amino acids involved, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Acquired developmentals for prenatal would be uncontrolled diabetes from the mother, anemia, emphysema, hypertension, long-term use of alcohol and narcotic substances, as well as maternal infections during pregnancy, especially viral infection. So rubella or German measles would contribute to congenital malformations and intellectual disability caused by maternal infection. Symptoms would be congenital heart disease, intellectual disability, cataracts, deafness, microcephaly, and microphthalmia.
if infected in the first trimester of pregnancy, 10 to 15% of the children are affected. Affected, And the incidence rises almost to 50% when the infection occurs in the first month of pregnancy. For cytomegalic inclusion disease, jaundice, microcephaly, hepatosplenomegaly, and radiographic findings of intracerebral calcification is noted. Syphilis was once the leading cause of various neuropathologic changes in the offspring, including intellectual disability. Toxoplasmosis infection is also a cause for mild or severe intellectual disability, and in severe cases, hydrocephalus seizures, microcephaly, and chorioretinitis. Herpex, herpes simplex virus can be transmitted transplant, transplacentally. Although the most common mode of infection is during birth, symptoms would be microcephaly, intellectual disability, intracranial calcification, and ocular abnormalities. <coughs> HIV virus would lead to progressive encephalopathy, intellectual disability, and seizures within the first year of life. For fetal alcohol syndrome, so the symptoms would be growth retardation of prenatal origin, facial dysmorphism, they have microcephaly, hypertellurism, microphthalmia, short palpebral fissures, inner epicanthal folds, mid-face hypoplasia, smooth or short philtrum, thin upper lip, short turned up nose. There are also cardiac defects and CNS manifestations such as hyperactivity, learning disabilities, attention deficits, intellectual deficits, and seizures. For prenatal drug exposure, they usually produce uh, babies with small for their gestational age with head circumference below the 10th percentile. Irritability, hypertonia, tremor, vomiting, and a high-pitched cry with abnormal sleep pattern. Seizures are unusual but the withdrawal syndrome can be life-threatening to infants if untreated. For long-term effects or sequelae of opioid exposure, there is risk for impulsivity and behavioral problems. In the early neonatal period, they can also have transient neurologic and behavioral abnormalities in including abnormal results on EEG, tachycardia, poor feeding patterns, irritability, and excessive drowsiness. Complications during pregnancy such as toxemia of pregnancy, uncontrolled maternal diabetes, malnutrition, often results in prematurity and other obstetrical complications. Vaginal hemorrhage, placenta previa, premature separation of the placenta, and prolapse of the cord can also damage the fetal brain causing anoxia, leading to intellectual disabilities. For the perinatal period, Premature infants and infants with low birth weight are at high risk for neurologic and subtle intellectual impairments that may not be apparent until their school years. Infants who also sustain intracranial hemorrhage or show evidence of cerebral ischemia are especially vulnerable to cognitive abnormalities. Socioeconomic deprivation can also affect the adaptive function of these vulnerable infants. Early intervention may improve their cognitive, language, and perceptual abilities. Acquired childhood disorders such as infection, specifically encephalitis and meningitis. An example, the subacute sclerosing panencephalitis is a rare, usually fatal degenerative disease that occurs years after the infection. Delayed diagnosis of meningitis, even when followed by antibiotic treatment, can seriously affect a child's cognitive development. Head trauma from motor vehicular accidents, household accidents, head injuries from fall from tables, windows, and stairways, child maltreatment from frequent head trauma, such as bleeding during shaken baby syndrome, asphyxia, uh, brain damage due to asphyxia from drowning or near drowning is un not an uncommon cause of intellectual disability. 
long-term exposures to lead is a well-established cause of compromised intelligence and learning skills. Intracranial tumors of various types and origins, surgery, chemotherapy can also adversely affect brain function. Uh, environmental and social cultural factors would be significant deprivation of nutrition and nurturance, poor medical care and poor maternal nutrition, teenage pregnancies, poor postnatal medical care, malnutrition, and exposure to toxic substances, as well as potential physical trauma, child neglect, and inadequate caretaking may deprive an infant of both physical and emotional nurturances, leading in failure to thrive syndromes, and at risk for intellectual disability. That is all, and thank you for your attention.